April from April's Home. Today I thought I would take you through the garden and show you some of the things that I've been up to. So my sweet potatoes finally arrived today. I have two varieties here, Georgia Jet and Centennial. And this is how they come. They look kind of dead like this, but um, that is okay. I'm going to go ahead now and get them all unwrapped and kind of lay them out in my garden. I'll do half, one side with Centennial and one side with Georgia Jet. And I will um, show you what these look like when I get them all unwrapped as well. So this is how they come. This is sort of wrapped around the uh, roots here to keep them from rotting. I think this is a little bit of moss and they're very easy to just separate. The instructions are to go ahead and set these in the ground um, in the afternoon so it's not too hot. And to avoid getting the tops wet, I'm just going to uh, fill the hole where I place the roots with a little bit of water from my watering can. And so it looks like there's plenty here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and separate these out and start getting them planted. Okay, so I have the Centennial ones laid out on this side and the Georgia Jets on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and dig a hole for each one. Just kind of lay that in there. I'm going to use my uh, watering can to fill that with water. Just like so to avoid getting those leaves wet so they don't rot. I'm going to give that a nice good watering there. I'll probably add a little bit more water. And then I'm going to firm the soil around it. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves and get that done with all of these. Okay, so I have this bed planted and I have overplanted it quite a bit. They are supposed to be 18 inches apart. These are only about a foot apart. Um, I kind of do intensive gardening in these raised beds, so I will kind of watch how they do. And again, this is sort of an experimental year with these sweet potatoes. So we will learn from how uh, they grow this year and see what we can do differently next year. Um, if any of them die too, I'll be able to pluck those out, make room for the healthy ones. I've also planted a couple of marigolds at the end of my bed, which I've been doing with all of my beds so far this year. And I thought I'd also point out a little find here. This is a peanut. I have a jay, a couple of blue jays that just hide these all over the garden. I'll go ahead and leave this here for him to find later. Um, I'm hoping to film him sometime this week. He's quite a character and he absolutely loves getting his peanuts and hiding them all through the garden. So that is the sweet potato bed here, Georgia Jet and Centennial. And I really look forward to seeing how these grow this year. And just as I finished planting the sweet potatoes, two more orders of live plants from Burpee arrived. These are my blueberries and currants. I'll go ahead and open these up and let you see what's inside. Okay, so this is what was in the boxes here. These are my blueberries and these are my currants. The currants are little tiny like bare root plants here and we'll get those going tomorrow. And it looks like all the blueberries did pretty well except for this one here. I'll have to kind of set this one aside and see if a little TLC will bring that back. But otherwise I'm pretty happy with how green these are um, for having traveled through the mail. So this is my work for tomorrow, getting all of these blueberries and currants planted. So today we'll be planting our asparagus. Finally, we've got our bed almost all ready for it. We're just working on finishing up the soil. So I've laid out all the different asparagus crowns here. And what we'll be doing is digging a hole about six to eight inches deep and kind of opening up the roots here so they're in a circle and then um, planting them up to here and then as these grow we'll bury it a little bit more kind of keep our eye on those so these are the asparagus crowns okay so here's the side of the yard that we have sectioned off to grow our asparagus patch here um, and you can see I've put a little walkway through and my husband helped me do all this he built this fence for me which I just love and he helped me get all these um, asparagus planted we decided to put little flags where each of them are planted so that we can kind of watch for them to come up see how they're doing we've left some dirt piled up um, here and there to kind of uh, bring over the tops of them uh, as they grow up a little bit you're supposed to put a little bit of dirt over them again and um, so we'll see how that grows it's kind of an experiment um, we'll keep trying until we make this our permanent asparagus bed it's definitely a long-term project there will be no asparagus this year and maybe a little bit next year and then the third year is when you can really enjoy a full harvest and then if you keep it up and maintain it it can last for up to like 20 years or more so it's a really exciting thing to be growing here and I'm really enjoying my new little fenced off area so this is something I add to the garden every year um, that I can find them in my garden center. These are live ladybugs here and a praying mantis little um, egg sac here. We have hatched these before in the past. It's really an interesting thing to watch if you can um, get a hold of one of these. So I'm um, 
bringing these ladybugs out. It's kind of a cool evening. It's towards the evening tonight, and that's the best time to release them. So you can see all the little ladybugs moving around in the bag there. And uh, we'll keep watch on this praying mantis sack as well. So I'm going to go ahead now and very, very carefully open this up. It's sealed at the top, so I will need to kind of shake them down and use scissors to um, carefully open them up without damaging any of the little ladybugs inside here. But um, I'll go ahead and do that and then film uh, them coming out of their bag here. So here they are making their way out. Let's see if we can put a few over here in the peppers. There's one there. Hopefully these will eat the aphids throughout the garden. We'll sprinkle some here in the kale. Now, of course, these are just gonna fly around to wherever they feel uh, like they want to be, but um, hopefully they will come back and eat the aphids on kale. We often have aphids that like to get on the kale, and I would prefer to use ladybugs before I use anything else. Um, I do tend to keep things pretty chemical-free around here. Here's one climbing away. You can see, I think ladybugs are so cute. Pretty cool. So here they are in the garlic patch. Kind of spreading them around the garden here. So we'll put some in our very messy blueberry patch. Here's one crawling away. We'll let a few climb out in the goose, or in the uh, currant bush here. There's another one. This is a wonderful thing to do if you have children. We used to do this with the children uh, when they were little and they just absolutely loved this process, watching the ladybugs. Um, this one, most of them are mature, but in some of them you can, uh, when you buy them and they're a little bit younger, they include some of the uh, larva, which is also interesting to kind of watch that process. It's a pretty young one there. It doesn't have its spots yet. There's a whole bunch crawling around there. They all seem very healthy. Here's my lovely sage. It looks like it's about to bloom. And I'm sure we will have some hummingbirds visiting this very soon. Here you go, ladybugs. Let some go near the rosemary here. There they are, curling along. As they kind of leave the bag, you can see them all. Hopefully they'll find a good home. Bring some to the blueberry plant here. You see, there's one. Let some go on the grapevine here. There you can see. So it'll be really neat to see the praying mantis egg hatch as well. Um, my one, the one I purchased last year did not ever hatch, so I'm really hoping that this year this one does. I do love praying mantises in the garden. I think I will go ahead, let the rest of these crawl out for a bit here in the herb garden. Now when we see a ladybug in the garden all summer, I'll wonder if it was one that came from this bag perhaps. Definitely a really neat thing for the garden. So I'll give these few a minute or so to escape and shake out the rest so that they're not trapped in the mesh bag. But that's that. It's as easy as that to bring ladybugs into your garden. Okay, so we've started planting this area off again. This was the garden that last year I was trying to grow into a butterfly bee sort of garden with a lot of those kind of uh, flowers that the uh, birds, like the little hummingbirds and butterflies and bees really enjoyed. But unfortunately my dogs kept going in and, and breaking a lot of the plants. So we have put back up the garden gate that used, or the little garden fence that used to be here and we've kind of run some a little landscaping tape through the side so that my dogs know it's here and um, can learn to avoid going in there. So here I planted a little um, Monarda plant, a little balmy lilac uh, type plant. This is really wonderful for butterflies and uh, bees and some cosmos. And then back there is a salvia. I've got a couple others of those as well. The hummingbirds absolutely love those. And you can see that the bees absolutely are loving the apple blossoms. I also stopped in again at my local Buy Mart to pick up some supplies and while I was there I found a few more plants that were um, on for a really good price. This flat of beautiful marigolds that I thought I would add into a few various spots in my garden was uh, only $10 for that whole big um, tray there which I thought was was good at least it's good for around here and then I got a blackberry bush and a raspberry bush over there that I'm going to plant on the other side of my garden I'll show you how that's um, going to be planted I'm actually I looked up how to grow these in containers so that they wouldn't get out of control so I'm going to try that and then I got a little Douglas fir tree. I love Douglas fir trees being from Oregon. And I'm going to plant this in a pot and treat it sort of like a little bonsai 
um, Douglas fir, like a little mini ode to the forest sort of um, planting there. And I'll show you how I get that potted up as well. And then we have my two stone planters here. I really love these. This one last year did wonderfully. Um, you can see the hens and chicks here just growing all throughout the pot. Unfortunately, this one got full of grass. So I'm going to clear that one out. And I think there's my dog saying hi there. Hi, Percy. Um, I think I found a pretty good match here for this one and I'll be planting this in this pot and hopefully it will fill out just like that one so we'll have two matching pots. So I'll show you that when it's done as well. Okay so here we have the plant all potted up here, um, these little succulents and hopefully it'll look like this by the end of summer or maybe next year perhaps in the fall. We'll see how fast it grows, but either way, it's going to look like this eventually, and I think that they'll look really nice side by side. Also, while I was at the uh, little garden area of the store that I was at, saw these on clearance for a dollar. They're little shallots. It's a bit late in putting them in around here. That's why they were on clearance, but I thought I would give it a try in this little area where the garlic never came up, so I'm going to go ahead and get those planted there. And here's the squash bed all cleared out. I've got my marigolds put in here and along the back. I put in just a few little corns that I picked up, um, already started. These probably won't produce much corn, but I just love the look of them in the fall. So I always do like to tuck in a few corns. And if we get a couple of um, pieces of corn, that would be wonderful. Down here in my little shady area, you can see my little maple trees coming along nicely. I've got to weed the bucket. And under here is a really beautiful sword fern that has planted itself. So I'd like to get those weeds out. Um, so they can not compete with that plant. Down here I've got a little maiden hair from last year coming back and a new one that I planted along with some really pretty coleus there. Here's another one of my uh, maiden hair ferns. And in this pot here I planted a little blueberry plant and two little nasturtiums. And I also thought I'd share with you my new little shoes here, my new little garden shoes that I also spotted as we were leaving the store. Um, these caught my eye and they had my size. So I thought that I would pick these up. They're just little slip-ons like this, um, which is a little bit easier to wear in the summer than my big gardening boots. That way my shoes uh, can be easily clean. They're just made of rubber. They're really, really comfortable and you can see the cute little chickens on them. So that was definitely a fun treat to find and I'm really happy to have these. They're definitely gonna be fun to wear as I garden throughout this summer. Over in this little corner here, I've planted a little sword fern and some nasturtiums and I'm gonna tuck in some moss and little um, sedums and hens and chicks as I find them. Here we have another pot with a little blueberry and some nasturtiums. And over here, I've got uh, my uh, little currant bush there in the center. And then two of them that I ordered, they just look like twigs right now but we will keep our eye on them and see how they do. Here you can see the peas that we planted last time. They are starting to come up here and I'm really excited to see that in both pots. Very, very fun to watch those start to come up. Sadly, the beans are not coming up yet. The Anasazi and black beans that I planted, really keeping watch on them. A cat has been in this bed a couple of times, kind of scratching it up. I've had to replant some of the beans a couple of times now, so We'll see how this does and just keep watch on it. And now in this portion of the garden, I'm going to go ahead and direct sow some of my sunflower seeds, the Van Gogh sunflower mix, the Mammoth Gray, and the Black Russian sunflower along this fence here. We have filled the bird feeders here at one of our little stations here in the yard right by one of my little apple trees. I've set out some peanuts and we'll see if some blue jays come along and gather them up. tried to capture the footage of the blue jay a couple of times gathering up all these peanuts and for some reason something keeps shutting my camera off. Of course I have to walk away and go back in the house so that the birds feel comfortable to come out. They're not used to the camera or anything like that sitting out. Um, so I will have to try again next week but you can see how industrious he has been or she. I'm not sure uh, if it is a boy or a girl but the blue jay has been hard at work gathering and hiding all of these peanuts. It is really 
quite a funny thing to watch. Uh, the blue jay lands and picks up a peanut and sometimes chooses another one. It seems almost like it's picking them based on weight. And uh, you can see also a ton of starlings stopping by these feeders as well. So we have filled up our bird feeders. This side we put corn suet. In this feeder here it is uh, shelled peanuts and then in this we have a no waste variety. And then of course you saw the peanuts on the fence and this is sort of our little bird uh, corner here. But it a couple more this week, this bright pink one. I think it might be Dianthus, not 100% sure, as well as a different variety of salvia there, as well as a few snapdragons and things like that, as and some nasturtium. We've also moved the pot of lavender over here to prevent the dogs from sort of uh, coming through the fence. They love to go back behind this holly bush here, um, and you can see the lavender is blooming beautifully. Here's how I've potted up the little um, Douglas fir tree here with a sword fern and a maidenhair fern down at the base. I think this will look really pretty potted up. I may add some flowers if I find one that I think kind of fits the look I'm going for here. On this side of the garden we have planted all along here um, are sunflowers in the three different varieties I showed. I'm looking forward to seeing how those um, grow. And then of course you can see our fig tree here is starting to get its leaves. I'm excited to watch this grow. Last year this was about half this size, so um, this year we will see how well it grows and if we can get any mature figs to show up on the tree this year. Here under the tree here you can see a lovely dog toy, my dog's hidden, but uh, we have a bunch of this sedum here that I've harvested from throughout the other garden beds. So I'll be growing that in between the different uh, little bricks here. So I'll take this and divide it up and spread it throughout my garden. That'll be a chore that I'll be working on this next week. Over in the vegetable garden I still have to get this blueberry in, but I've started clearing out some of the weeds. And I did finish this one here. So this one's all potted with some nasturtiums. And you can see the work of that blue jay. I saw him putting this little peanut under here. I'll go ahead and leave that for him. But he has been hiding them in all my little pots, which I think is just so funny. I've also planted a couple pots of lettuce here. We've got some crisp leaf lettuce here and some romaine here. Over here I'm working on some of my pots that I will be moving throughout the garden. Um, these two I've put some geraniums in. I always get this bright salmon-y colored geranium. It reminds me of my grandma. She grew this one every year and a few of the other really bright geraniums. So I just love to have a few of those in my garden every year. The tomatoes are doing well and I've added a tomatilla to this pot here. And I'm very excited to see some of my beans coming up here. I was getting really worried they just were not coming up, but you can see them starting to come up here. And if there are some blank spots or little uh, patches where they don't come up, I will go ahead and replant those. And none of the purple ones have come up yet, so we may end up putting uh, green ones over here if these don't uh, um, germinate. The pepper plants are doing really well and so are the tomatoes in the back there. So are the kale. The kale are growing really nicely, you can see. And the artichokes, those first leaves that were kind of withering last time have started to come back. The cilantro is doing nicely. The dill is doing nicely. One of my chores for next week is definitely going to be the little pathways here. They're still very weedy. We've been pulling them out little by little, but we really wanted to focus on the beds before um, this whole next week coming up is supposed to be pretty rainy. So we wanted to get those planted so that they could enjoy the rain. Here's our little um, pink lemonade blueberry doing really well and so is the gooseberry. Still need to work on this blueberry patch. This is one bed I'm not looking forward to. It's very weedy but mixed in are a whole bunch of really nice plants I want to um, transplant elsewhere. The garlic is doing really nicely and I have also taken the time to plant the shallots in here. And we are also uh, growing our uh, squash bed here. And I've got this half has uh, zucchini, regular green zucchini and yellow zucchini. Got a little pumpkin here and then four acorn squash. Here our little currant plant is doing very nicely. You can see all of the little flower buds there. They'll be berries. And here is our one bachelor button that looks so pretty. I love these and I can't wait to plant a few more, but I'm glad that we have one that uh, reseeded itself from last year. It's looking very beautiful. The sage is about to blossom, which is going to make our hummingbirds really happy. And I've also got to get this uh, 
clean down a little bit more and plant some of my other herbs. Over here is our sweet potato bed and you can see it looks like somebody has been walking all through it. That is a cat that keeps visiting my garden here and disturbing the soil. So hopefully these can make it. They, they're looking pretty sad. Um, some of them are doing better though. You can see here's a new leaf on one and uh, here's a start of one there and there. So I'm holding out hope and I really um, need to come up with a way to uh, discourage the cat from continuing to dig through this bed here. And then you can see a few of my Anasazi beans are starting to come up as well. Um, just a few here and there. This one is the most uh, tall one so far and unfortunately none of the black beans. Again, we'll just pop in regular um, beans if these don't uh, germinate. You can see the peas are even bigger than just a couple of days ago. Here are the others here. And the grapes are really starting to fill out. I've got to tame these vines a little bit. That's one of my projects for next week. And then next week we'll plant the rest of these. Um, I've got the raspberry and blackberry that I'll be planting. I'll plant these marigolds in the front yard more than likely and maybe a few in the back and tuck in the rest of these flowers. So we've made some pretty good progress this week. I just love this little tree and I'll definitely be adding a few more flowers and a few more pots as the weeks go on and keep you updated as to how the vegetable garden is doing as well as the asparagus patch here which I'm very eager to see if they come up and how well they do. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my garden this week. We'll spend a little time watching these bird feeders and see who arrives here. Lots of the little goldfinch and red-headed finch enjoy these feeders over here. Again, I just use a finch blend, no waste seed uh, mix in most of my feeders. And in some of the others, I like to put just the sunflower chips. So we'll enjoy that for a little while. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more videos from April's home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.